Welcome to part two of our electrical build videos. In the first part, we showed you all the cool features of our setup and gave you some information on how to start your own. In this video, we want to run you through the process of installing this system, including our shore power, inverter charger, distribution panel, and much more. But first, here are a couple shots of our quick trip to one of our favorite places, Deer Lake. We love taking time to enjoy the new features after each step of our build and reap the rewards of our hard work. We loved having our electrical setup for this trip and especially our shore power connection. We ran a box fan and electric heater all weekend long to keep the van at a comfortable temperature. We were also able to keep our laptop plugged in for watching movies at night. We were able to charge all of our devices and run our cooler for our food. First thing we had to do was take apart our initial 12 volt setup we quickly threw together before our Yosemite trip last year. We were overwhelmed and on a time crunch, so we decided not to record any of this process. In reality, this was a perfect practice run that gave us the confidence we needed to do our upgrades in the future. Fair warning, this video is long. It has some lengthy explanations and time lapses. Because of this, I have included links in the description to jump around to specific parts for those who are interested. Once it was all taken apart, it was time to paint and prime the walls and the wheel well box that's going to contain our electrical wires. And now we are all ready to build a bigger, better, and more efficient electrical system. Man, this Washington spring weather has been such a drag. It's never really nice. It's always questionable like this. And the worst thing that can happen is you get so excited and you get all your tools out, you get everything ready, you start working on the van, and then here comes the rain. At some point, we're just gonna have to start working. So today we're gonna try and get some of the electrical done, mostly be in the van. I wanna show you guys some of the basic electrical knowledge that you need for adding the terminals and connections and running wires. It's really basic stuff and there's tons of YouTube stuff on it. I'm not gonna try and teach you like I'm an expert. I'm just gonna show you what I know. I would recommend that you just do some search on some actual electricians or some really popular videos on how to do crimp connections and things like that. So I'm doing some adjustments. My batteries were originally pushed all the way to that side and that piece of wood that I'm gonna put there was on this side here. But this gives me more space, plus gives me just enough space here to run some wires down and over along that board and then use this as a little wire highway to right here where my distribution panel will be. And I'll put all of my components on this wall here. And then this top gap here, I'm gonna try and leave enough space to have a little door that I can open and have a small cupboard right here. We're gonna have one outlet 120 there along with some USB ports and all of our switches and everything kind of built into the wall right here. So, real quick, for those who don't know, this is a positive bus bar, this is a negative bus bar. The only difference is the color, it doesn't really matter. Once I bring power to one of these posts, it will energize all of these posts. This is my battery shunt. This is what records the data of how much electricity is coming into it and out of it. It's for my battery monitor so that we can monitor the status. I didn't want to double up on posts. I have read that you could put multiple connections to one post. So I've got two negative bus bars because I've got a couple grounds that I gotta run. So I'm gonna attach some of these pieces and start trying to connect some of the wire and see if this placement will work for me. Starting to work on some of these wires. I'm trying to reuse some of the wires that I had previously made. These are some connections that I made before for one of the battery wires. I believe this is called a lug terminal. They're very specific. So first off, you need to know the gauge of your wire. This is for two 
slash zero gauge wire. This is this really thick battery cable. And then this end, the circle has different sizes too. This one's a 5 16 This one's a little bit smaller. Um, it looks bigger. No, it's a 3 8 It's a little bit bigger. I'm sorry. Allison's right. It's a 3 8 So this one's a little bit bigger. And so I needed this size to fit on here because as you can see, these ones are too small, which is part of the reason in our original install, we didn't add a main battery disconnect. So I'm adding that. I'm going to use this wire that I used before. I want to put it right here. So this is going to need to connect here and then the other side will come right down to my batteries down here. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make these types of connections. This is one tool you'll need to buy if you're gonna be making these battery connections yourself using this really thick cable. You need a really heavy duty wire cutter. Yeah, let's take this electrical tape off so that I can see what I'm cutting. And you can see, oh, well, there goes that whole connection. I don't know if I did that well enough then. That's probably not good. We did it in the middle of the night, as we've told you. And for these, you've got to hammer them on. So I wasn't hitting very hard. So we'll do it a little differently this time. But now you can see what that looked like inside there. Lots of mini, these are called stranded. That's what you want to get from mobile application. Anything that's going to have a lot of vibration or be moving. In houses, they use solid wire. Anyway, we'll see if this fits in here. I still think I need to cut it a little smaller though. So I do need to cut it down a little bit. The best way to find out what length I need it though, I'm gonna put this on here and set it right where I want it. Since there's no bolt or anything on there, it should fall off when I lift it up. So that's where it's gonna be about. Now we can look here. See, this cable can only go in about that far. So really I need to cut it like right here. This is gonna make a little bit of a mess with all these wires. Trying to do it slow so these wires don't fly everywhere. Oh, there they go. There we go, we've made that cut. That's garbage, but you can see, look at that, that's kind of cool. Now for stripping this kind of wire, they actually sell heavy duty strippers, strippers, they sell <laughs> heavy duty wire strippers. But what I was doing and what I'm gonna do for this, I'm gonna find out how much we need here. So we need about that much space. Mark it with my nail a little bit right there. I use these to do it with this heavy duty stuff. And then I just pinch in just a tiny bit, turn this wire. So I've got a full circle there. And I may or may not have gone deep enough, we'll see. And then I just kind of try and break it off. And there you go, there we have a stripped wire. Got the bare stranded copper wire there. This piece should fit right on there. Boom, like that. And let's just double check that this size will work. I think that's just about perfect. I might have to move it. Yeah, if we could just take the tiniest bit off. If you decide to do it the way I'm doing it, make sure you don't cut in enough to start cutting into the strand. If you lose a couple of these strands, it's gonna be okay, because look how many there are. The more you cut, the less conductive it's gonna be. So you really wanna try and not touch the metal strands when you're doing this. And I need to shave just a little bit more of the insulation off of this one. So I'm trying to be real gentle. I guarantee, if you were to look online for the proper way to do this, there's easier ways, but we don't take the easy way of anything we do, so. Now, you always want this flat side to sit flat against the metal on either end here. So this has got to sit this direction. On this one, this won't fit like this, so I'm actually going to need it this direction so that it's nice and flush against there. This is going to actually have to be the opposite direction on here. Fit every wire in there, boom. So this is how it's going to sit. Let's do another test fit. Something like this right here. But now I gotta crimp that. Let's show you how you do a heavy wire crimp now. So this is a large gauge wire crimper. It allows you to put the terminal that you're connecting in there with this heavy weight on it. And you use a hammer to smash it till it pinches the wire strong enough to hold it on there permanently. I'll show you. We're gonna pull this little lever here put this guy in here get it right where I want the crimp to happen and give it a couple taps to get it started push it in now I'm gonna really give it some good wax Let's take a little look see that's what it should look like not coming off see that we uh, misplaced the red electrical tape that we had, so I'm gonna use black. Again, it's just a color. It's just to help you know. Since the wires, the cable's red, 
I'm not too worried about using black electrical tape to insulate this area. You don't want any bare metal exposed. You want to cover all that up. Just like that, you've made a large heavy gauge connection with a terminal. You do that about 50 times for every connection that you need. Make sure you got the right hole size, the right gauge size, and that you take your time connecting these. Well, this still fits in there. And it's gonna connect right here. This will toggle the connection between these two cables. So when it's off, there's no connection. When it's on, there is. So the battery comes to here. We turn it on. Then now it powers this whole bar. Then I can run my other positives off of here. So I'm trying to add my external short plug in. I really want to put it right in the back here like I've seen some people do. Well, it turns out you have to take off this whole side panel to do that. There's a couple of clips on the bottom here that you can take off and in the wheel well. And once you've got all the clips out, you can just gently pull it off. I was able to take it off without breaking any of the brackets here. Now you can get to these three, which are actually T30 torques. I couldn't find that information online anywhere either. So now I'm going to try taking it off and hopefully be able to wire my outer shore power. I don't advise doing it that way, but that was a hell of a lot easier than taking this off to take this off. I originally drilled too small of a hole, I needed to make it a little bigger, and I don't have the right hole saw for it. So, router seemingly worked. I'll have to clean that off. Whew. I want to show you where I fed the cord through. I didn't want to drill into the van, but I found a little vent back there that I went ahead and ran the wire through, plus some of the frame. So I'll show you that. I don't know if that's what other people do, but that's what I'm doing, and it seems like it's going to work. Let's take a look. And this will be the switch that controls the lights for our garage area. This is what we call our garage. So this is gonna be our light switch for these lights right here. I've got two of them and these are going to go right in here. These little switches are great. I think for a couple bucks I got a pack of them on Amazon of three. 
They have a little LED light that turns on when they're on. If you want that feature, you don't have to install it that way. And all you need is these little female disconnect pieces. Get the size that's right for the gauge that you're going to use. So I've just made one of the connections that I need for this light. I'll show you how you add this. This is very simple. You just crimp right here after putting the wire in here. So there's nothing about it. So the first thing you do is measure out the wire. I'm going to do the black one now. I need two positives on here. Um, one coming from the battery, one going to the lights. But I'm going to go ahead and do the black one now. So I'm going to get the same length for this. I'm just cutting these first and then I'll put the button through and wire it. So I need about this long. Use your little tool. In the end here you got a wire cutter for small gauge. Pinch. Boom. I like to use one of these to also measure how much I need to strip off here. So it needs to go in that far. So I'm going to strip to about right here. Put it on the right size. I don't know the right size, but I think a 1.5. And pull. There you go. Okay, twist it up. Press it inside there. Get it nice and all the way in. You can see that it's gone all the way in there. Then you use the blue on here for insulated crimp. Right in the middle there. Just squeeze real hard. There we go. Once it's nice and tight, you should be able to give it a little tug. Nothing happens. Now, I've got my second wire. Just slide that on for the negative. There's two of my three done. Now I've cut and trimmed the insulation off the wires. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this butt connector and connect the positive in line with the positive and the negative in line with the negatives. Now the black side. I'm connecting the battery light on this side coming from the battery connected to the other parts which is going to the load. So two ends on this side, one on this side. Step three, heat up the heat shrink. Turn it on. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna install the 125 volt 15 amp outlet in the back of the garage area. Unlike with house wires where they use solid copper, when you're using the stranded, you need to get these fork shaped spade connectors. You wanna get the right size for your gauge. So I'm using a 10 gauge wire, so I got 10 gauge. And it's a simple crimp add-on that will then slide in underneath the screw that I can screw on tightly. We're gonna do the white one first here. So twist. Put this in here, slide it through. You can see it came all the way through here. Put the crimp right there. Squeeze real tight. And that should be pretty solid. And that's gonna just slide right onto there and then we'll tighten that screw right onto it. So that's the white. We'll do the black next. Last one we gotta do, which is also on this side, it's gonna be this green for ground. That's the screw on the bottom here. There we go, all three are on there. Make sure it's nice. You obviously want the flat side of this up onto the metal plate of the outlet. Now they have two posts here. I don't think it matters which one you use. The other ones are for adding multiple outlets to a single circuit. 
Last one, very important one, the ground. Okay. So here is where the positive 2O gauge wire is coming into my inverter. So this is the DC positive. And this is gonna be our DC negative. I'm gonna run this through here onto this post here. This side here has got these little inserts that you can cut to fit around your cable. Help prevent dust and other things from getting in there. It's a nice sealed look. So on this end is the AC in and AC out. For the AC in, I'm using the wire that I put to my shore power connection over there. So when that's plugged in over there, it will be charging or running through this, which is a charger. So my AC in side is right here. If you take a look, it's real simple. Just a couple easy screws that are easily marked. Shove that all the way in. Tighten this screw down. L is for line, which is your hot wire, which is the black for the US standard AC. Different than DC, where black is your negative. That's all the way in. Next, we'll do neutral, which is this white wire. Screw it down. And the last one will be green, which is your earth. And that's what PE stands for. I think it's protective earth. As far as that'll go, tighten it down. As far as we can. All right, that should be the AC in side of my inverter charger. Now we'll do the AC out. Notice they're not in order here, so make sure you, you know, if I was to just copy and put black here like I did for the AC in, it'd be wrong. Line is in the middle on the out for some reason. I don't know why. Neutral's here, which I don't have a green wire, but that's okay. I've marked this green so that I know this is my neutral or ground for, or not neutral, this is my ground for this. Why do you have bigger wires to go out? Because we might use more. For charging, we're not gonna, it doesn't charge as as many amps as something might take. And my neutral, which would normally be a white wire, is also gonna be a red wire because I have extra wire for this. It's the right size. The insulation is enough to allow for the 120 volts. It's just colors, they do not matter. Yep, she just won't stop. No matter how mad I get at her. <laughs> Enough! You goober. Don't come and lick me, no. All right. Now let's see if we can slide this off. It's finally basically installed. <laughs> so we're going to use this aluminum trim here to finish the wheel well box. We think it'll look nice because it's kind of you know, rugged back there anyway, and we want it to be. I'm just using a thin metal, metal jigsaw blade. I forget exactly how many TPI, teeth per inch, this one is, but you want to get one that's rated for metal. You can see it's got a lot of tiny little teeth instead of the larger teeth you see with wood bits.
now it's time to reinstall the distribution panel that I have. This one's great because it can do both my DC side and my AC side in one panel. And it looks really nice right here and fits really well. I've already had it installed previously with my 12 volt circuit. First thing I did was punch all these holes here in the back so I could get these wires through. Now I'm gonna feed all of these wires one at a time and plug them in. Positives here, negatives here for the DC side. My positive coming in from the battery goes to here, my negative from the battery here. That energizes this whole bar. And then right here is where I put my fuses. Over here is the AC side. I've currently got four breakers that I could use. This 30 amp breaker is actually for the uh, power coming in from the inverter. It's gonna go to here, which will energize this bar. I've got these four extra breakers, two breakers, but each of them has two on them. They're called tandem breakers. Uh, it allows two breakers on one pole spot. So I've got four spots. One of these is gonna go to the back garage. One of these is gonna go by our footboard. One of these is going to go in the kitchen and I have an extra one that I'll probably just plug into an extension cord or something. I'm not sure yet. And then down here, you have your neutral in the front and your ground in the back. Notice the green and white wires already here and this black one. That is to power this piece right here. Um, so I have an outlet on the back if I just want to plug an extension cable in and call it good. Really awesome device. Let's plug it in, see what it looks like. This side, man. That was kind of a pain. So now we're doing the AC side of things, which is just a slightly different. The AC side, you have three wires. You've got the neutral, the hot, and the ground. Right now I'm doing the AC in, so this is the power coming from the inverter. The first one ran, the black wire ran to here, my 30 amp breaker, and now I'm adding the neutral the ground okay now put these on here hours and hours, seemingly hours and hours, messing with all these wires, we're finally attaching this back on. All right, so we think we've got everything plugged in correctly. I think when I start switching all these switches on, things are gonna happen. We're gonna start by switching this to on. Okay, I see a light here. This turned on up here. That's good. Now I'm gonna flip this to our, uh, flip the breaker to our, <gasps> whoop! We got garage lights. Okay, you wanna flip that light off? All right, the garage lights work. Let's test the top lights. One, two. All right, let's test the real thing that we're all wondering. Well, Allison and I are wondering. What else can we test here? Let's get the solar charge things going. So first we'll turn on the power from the battery. Then we'll turn on the power from the solar. Let's try turning this thing on. And we got a solid green light saying that it's on inverter. Cool, it does see the new smart bus is great connecting to it this app is awesome pair pair and connect 
One, two, three, four, five, six, I think. I think six zeros is the default password for these. You want to change that warning, updating the firmware. Okay, it needs an update. That's good. Let's go ahead and get this thing updating. So our inverter's on. So that outlet works. I'm charging my phone from that outlet. What else can we test? So the last thing we want to test for tonight, everything else seems to be working except our fan, which didn't work before too. See right now my inverter is inverting. We're going to see if when I plug it in and I've got this um, adapter to get it down to a 15 amp and we're going to see if it will show charging. I'm going to plug this in here. Let's see, AC in one. What was that? I don't know changed in here. Oh, bulk charge. Yep. Okay. So it just took a second, but that click, I think was it saying it's switched over to bulk charge. So now it's charging my van using this ca cable. I'm going to unplug it. We're all done charging. Yeah. Oh, it was up. like a switch. Yeah. There must be a switch in there that switches. Now it's just inverting. And the nice thing about this app is I can actually turn it off from here. So if we're not running anything off the inverter, you switch it to off, it turns off. Now we're not wasting any power since we're not actually needing to invert anything. So anytime we do need to plug into a 120 or 110 volt appliance, we just turn it on or we could do it from the switch on there, but I don't want to have to reach in there every time. So instead I'll just do it from here. I really like Vicron's apps for all these. That is pretty sweet. And there you have it folks, that is how we set up our off the grid electrical system in our van. I want to say thank you to everyone who watched this. We really hope that this was useful for you and that you're feeling more comfortable and confident with doing your own setup. As always, like, subscribe, and please leave us a comment below, tell us what you thought. We'll see you in the next one, bye.